guys, welcome back to my channel, Kazzy here, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite book covers of 2017. This video was meant to be going up last week, but then road work started outside of my house, and let's just be honest, there is enough background noise in these videos without tarmac being torn up included in it. I've got a brick in the work right now, I think they've finished the portion that's in front of my house. So I figured I'd sit down right now, pull all the books that I like out, and just talk about them and then hopefully I will get them edited fast enough and just put up the videos that were meant to go up last week up right one after the other and then I am going to be then back on track for the videos that I want to film for February. Also these are books that I bought in 2017. We all know I bought quite a lot of books in 2017 and if I included like all of my favourite book covers that I own in general we're going to be here for a while and we're going to be here for a while in general because I'm looking at this stack of books beside me and it is quite tall. I could probably just like put my arm on it and lean on it. So we're going to be talking about a few books. I'm not going to be talking about what these books are about. I'm just going to be talking about the covers. So with all that being said, let's just get started. As always, these aren't in any particular order because I am useless at putting things in order. First up is Witchborn by Nicholas Bowling. I literally bought this for the cover. I saw this in Barcelona airport and I just read the back of it and I just absolutely loved the sound of it but just look at this cover here for a second. I love the font that Witchborn is in. I am a font snob. You will learn this as we go along. I am an absolute font snob. I love this font the, the way the W is, the little stars on the I and in the O. I love this raven that's in and the flowers that are just featured on it i love that the way that the font is foiled it's just beautiful sometimes i just find myself noticing more every time i look at it like for example here just on the the raven there is a moon um almost symbol and it just looks phenomenal and the book inside it is beautiful as well next is spell slinger by sebastian de castell this book is another cover buy for me. I saw this at work and I just was just fell in love with it because of this cover. It's like a card and you see the main character up here with his little talking cat. He's a squirrel cat and he talks and so you just like notice how he's already in the picture even though you meet him quite further on into the book. I just love the design of Kellen himself and all the rings that are actually painted on them these are how they get their magic and I didn't actually notice that until I'm looking at it now it just shows how much you can actually just get from this book cover by just looking at it again and again and again I never noticed that before until now and then on the other side if I just turn it upwards you see this Argozi that is another prominent character in the book and her magic and her hair and her cards and just it's beautifully stunning this spine of it is pleasing to the eyes as well. Just this little symbol in the middle is beautiful and the back is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. See all these symbols that are important in the book and then in the four corners other symbols that I think represent the kind of four types of magic that they have and then on the inside you have these beautiful page ends that are just absolutely stunning. And I think the page ends seal the deal on me buying it, so absolutely stunning. Another book cover that I absolutely loved was The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by, Le by Leslie Walton. That's where a sticker was on it. I am in the morning because it's just a defaced this beautiful work of art. I love, love, love how intricate this feather is. You can always notice something different about it every single time. And again, with Witchborn, the gold aspect of it is foiled so that it, anytime you just do that with it, it just looks very, very pleasing to the eye. And then the spine, it has little gold feathers floating down and a beautiful font as well. And the book is blue and we all know that I love anything blue. There's a lot of blue in the upcoming books, let me tell you. Next up is Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Roche. I didn't think I was going to love this cover as much as I did because it, it it's unusual for a book cover when you think about it, but at the same time, when you actually read the book, you understand what this is. I didn't understand what this was until I read the book. It's actually called a chakram. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, probably. But you know in Xena Warrior Princess, the weapon that she uses, something like this. This kind of weapon is featured hev quite heavily in the books. And so whenever I realized what that was, then I looked at the book cover a lot closer and I absolutely fell in love with it. I love that in the background of the chakram it's like a 
forest and in between each piece of the chakram there's the spring kingdom and the winter kingdom and winter was taken over by spring in this book series and so that just makes me love the design even more because it, it looks like you know it's, it's almost like yin and yang you know that they're symbol but they're at war with each other but they need each other to survive kind of um, vibe to and it's in the snow and I love the fonts. I didn't think I would go I was going to like the fact that like it's in the middle of it I hate though it sometimes when fonts just take over everything but this just looks beautiful it, it's just the, the small little details of this book that I absolutely love and then the, the cover um, the snow goes all the way to the back that sometimes book covers don't do but it's um, it's aesthetically pleasing when they do it and just on the spine it has some of the gashes and then just the chakram in the middle but on its side so that if you have it on its side it would look beautiful as well. Next up is a book that I have absolutely loved every single book cover in this series that has been released by this author. I love them. Absolutely love them. They are so pleasing. The third one was released I think last week and I fell in love with it even though I'm not entirely sure that I want to read the next two books in this series but that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Where do I even start with this book? The font is beautiful. I love the way that the J is a bit bigger than um, the rest of that line. The R and Rippers are both big. The stalking in cursive, love it. The little embellishments of the lines and the flurries, absolutely adore. The image of London at the bottom around Whitechapel, it, it looks beautiful. I love the texture on it. I love the colouring of this book. It's beautiful. And of course, the girl at the top I find absolutely beautiful. I, I love it. Like This cover is literally what sold me on this. Not the fact that it's pretty, pretty much sanctuary in a book. Got sanctuary in. Yes. If you've never been to my channel before, I mention sanctuary pretty much in every single video that I do. When I mention sanctuary in a video, it's like basically take a shot. It's like a drinking game. It really is. I'm, I'm like my own drinking game. This is just beautiful. I love her outfit, her hair, her necklace is gorgeous. The red lips, yes. The, the knife she has in her hand, the little lace gloves, and the way that her outfit just seems to blend seamlessly into the London landscape below. I am absolutely in love with this book. Hunting Prince Dracula is gorgeous as well. Very fitting for the subject matter. I get just like this one is. It's fitting for the subject matter. Stuck in Jack the Ripper, Victorian. Garb and London landscape down below. Escaping Houdini, I think is the third one. Absolutely gorgeous. It's all blue. I am in love. And they all kind of have this beautiful woman at the top of each of the book covers. And the spine is even gorgeous as well. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this cover so much. And I kind of wish it was one that I could face out because it's just so beautiful. I just want to look at it all the time. This next book will come as no surprise whatsoever. Strange Dreamer by Eleni Taylor. I bought this in the airport just like with Witchborn and I didn't know anything really about this book except for that the cover really, really enticed me. Like just look at this cover. The US version of Strange Dreamer is just ugly. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It is ugly. This is just so freaking beautiful. And this is the hardback cover I have of it. You can just see the other one right here. This one is just gorgeous. It has like stars all over it. It has this beautiful moth design on it and gold is just absolutely stunning. You can notice more every time that you look at it. It's a recurring theme in all of my favorite book covers right here. I love the font that they have Lamy Taylor's name in and Strange Dreamer in. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's in blue. The page edges are spray blue. The back is blue. And it also has the moth design on the back but just in a very dark blue. It is gorgeous and the spine is everything. This book is literally everything. Next is Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. I absolutely love this one as well. I don't know why I keep saying it because it is gorgeous. I love this whole phoenix design. It is spectacular. The amount of detail in this is unreal. I love the way that it just swoops down into here and that the flowers on this design then seem to flow out towards the reader and they turn into throwing stars. I love that aspect of this design. When I noticed that I literally lost my cool. I was like what? Oh my god this is everything that I would love 
to do as a designer like I I just like play around with Photoshop a lot but this is everything that I would just love to be able to do I love the font of this I love the way that it's reflective whenever you move the book I am not afraid to admit I hate the design for the next book I absolutely hate it it looks awful it looks really really bad and I am not afraid to admit that it doesn't really keep in with this design it tries to but it feels miserably another book that is covered from top to bottom in blue carve the mark by veronica ross this book oh my goodness i'm getting blinded by the way that it's just shining right now is blue and of course there's a mark from the sticker why do these stickers not peel off easily i just love the way that these slash marks are like bleeding gold that's what really drew me to this book. I bought it when everybody else was talking about it, but it was just the cover of this that really sealed it for me. No, I lied. What really sold it for me was the blue sprayed edges. I was going to probably pick it up in like um, paperback from um, Eason's or something, but I just saw this in Waterstones and I was like, okay, you're coming home with me. I think it was too fine off. That's what the sticker was for. This book is just beautiful. I love this font very much. I love the way that it's embossed so that it sticks out. It is just beautiful. I love it. I haven't hauled this one yet, but it's going to make an appearance next week because I bought this in December. And then that is A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. This is the exclusive collector's edition that I got in Waterstones. It is pretty much the UK cover, but in this beautifully and astounding different design. I prefer it a lot more. I actually love the US design of this cover a lot more than I do the UK one. But when the UK one looks like this, I absolutely love it. It just speaks to me a lot more and you just like see Kel with all the different Londons at his feet and then a black one just like completely around him if you want to read into that. That is not a sticker, that does not come off so I don't have to worry about trying to take it off. The page ends on the inside is London. That is absolutely spectacular. And the book and the buff is just Kel and gold and then then I didn't actually notice this until I just did it there now. <laughs> Let's pretend that I notice a lot of stuff when I buy things, okay? I really don't. I really don't. The book cover turns into this. Oh my goodness. That is so amazing. Like I knew the US version did this, but this is just absolutely spectacular. I love it. I love it. I love it when books surprise us like that. But this is just gorgeous this can just sit on my bookshelf just like this and i will be ridiculously happy and if you were wondering i am not going to be reading this this is going to stay on my shelves looking pristine and perfect i'm just going to be reading the paperback that i have so another pretty book the greek gatsby by f scott fitzgerald i pretty much just bought this for the design of it it's just a beautiful shade, shade of like orange gold i don't know it's not even rose gold it's like an orangey gold it's very warm gold and this design just covers the entirety of this book. It is gorgeous. I'm looking at it to be fine because I just, I can't look at it except the corner of my eyes so I can just look at it right there and it looks beautiful. The book in the buff, again, is just beautiful. It's just very simple, very plain, but very, 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 very enticing. I haven't read it yet, but I will. It's just beautiful. Another classic that is absolutely gorgeous is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This book is just spectacular. If I was to ever do like a book for a backstory on Helen Magnus from her time in Victorian London from Sanctuary, this is the kind of design that I would want. I would want like all of these instruments to be around her and I just absolutely just love the way that it's gold and just sparkles purple and gold hello and then there's ones that are just engraved into the design that i never noticed before another one where like i notice crap when i'm actually looking up close and personal with it i am really useless font on the front yes they could have gone completely wrong with the font but this is just perfection and the spine even is beautiful because you can just like see a wee test tube it's not test tube it's measuring measuring cylinder and a beaker at the top and it's all bubbling and brooding and just everything and then the back of it is just pretty much the front it's gorgeous and i love when books come with little bookmarks attached to them it's the little things in life in 2017 i bought three versions of the one book one in a different language and one in 
paperback and you might know already which ones I'm talking about and that is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This one is the paperback that I absolutely adore. It's pretty much the same as the first hardcover that I got. I just was loving it because it has a big top at the bottom. It has these the, like a sunburst coming out from it that I absolutely love in the back that looks reflective. The spine is completely different to the front of it except it just matches the big top and it's blue and white and cream and has red stars in it and the edges are spray red. Recurring theme, I like sprayed edges, okay? I like them. I like them. I'm not gonna deny it. I like them. So this is the first one I'm going to show you. Show you? What the heck was that? Oh my gosh. Get into your accent, Kazzy. Get into your accent. This is the first one that I got. This is just beautiful. I, I love this font so much. This starburst coming out from it is just spectacular in the little teardrop here. And just at the edges, there's just these little clusters of stars going in and around. I love this way that they did the H and the G in Stephanie's name. The spine, black and white, that, that, I've never seen that before in a book, but it works. It's a pain in the ass for anybody that um, arranges their bookshelves by color. I don't, I, I have a major problem with trying to do that. I cannot do that because um, I like alphabetical, which you will see in the shelf tour that I'm going to do. Um, in a little while and the back is just like an inverse of the front in the starburst but you want to know the real stunning part of Carval this when the book is in the buff it has this beautiful absolutely stunning clockwork design on it with the same kind of star feel going around it but not quite the same because it's not stars it's bubbles but it just looks gorgeous and the spine is in gold and oh my goodness or just if you ever design this thank you but i'm not done yet with the caraval books because i also have an international version of it this is the spanish version of it i can read spanish this is gorgeous because it's all in blue it's all in blue this is pretty much the u.s version minus the red aspects of it because i know the u.s version is blue and red this is all blue it has little embellishments here it has like a big star in the middle it has a little flurry thing here is gorgeous and back and the back of this has like the actual invite on it obviously as a tagline instead of the actual invite that scarlet and tella get it's just gorgeous and like the inside the end pages are stunning it's like almost like the clock on my version but not the book itself is blue and the inside flaps are red like this gorgeous stunning red have you ever seen anything more like Saturated. I did not almost drop the book. So those are all the Caraval books. Next up is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. I have not seen many people have this version of Wonder Woman Warbringer, but I think this is like an exclusive UK version to Waterstones, I believe. I ordered this from Waterstones and it is actually signed by Lee Bardugo. Yep. It has a book plate inside of it. What I love about this design is that it is simple. It just has the Wonder Woman symbol in the center. Lee Bardugo in as like like the same width of it, and Wonder Woman Warbringer is just all in a line. I love the way that it just comes all into one line that is in line with this symbol in the middle. I love that it's it's aged in the edges as if you know this has been in a library at the mascara and you know one of the sisters has come along and read this and or they've all read it like diana has written it or something i don't know but somebody has written this ballad of diana i love how simple it is i really don't like the mass paperback edition of it where it's like wonder woman on it herself i, I don't like it but if I had it, I would, that would be the one that I would lend out to people because I don't want this to be absolutely destroyed. The spine, beautifully simple as well. I love the way on the inside it's pure orange. It's like this has just been scratched away to reveal the inside. I don't really know. When the book is in the book, it's really, really simple. Really simple. It's just a black book. And then you just have the Wonder Woman symbol on the spine just so that if you're reading it in public and you just see like you're reading Wonder Woman, Oh my goodness, that is just, that, that would please me more than if anything else were on this, just to have the spine with Wonder Woman on it. It's gorgeous. I love how simple it is, yet how impactful it is, because it's Wonder Woman. 
I'm leaning on this tar of books and I still have about three left. If you're still with me, thank you. Another Lee Bardugo book and that is Language of Thorns. And this is a collection of Midnight Tales and Dangerous Magic from the Grisha universe. What can I say about this book? I'll give you a second to figure out what I'm gonna say. Yep, it's blue. Yep, it's gold. Yep, the embellishments. Yep, the animals. There's animals in every single corner that are indicative to some of the teals that are in here. I love the whole flourishing of the thorns, obviously, language of thorns. This font, oh my goodness, this font is absolutely gorgeous. I just love the way that H goes and the N just goes up like that. And Lee Bardugo's name is just is beautiful, it's shiny. I love the way that this isn't a book jacket. This is actually embossed onto the book. It just like is raised, it's so satisfying to touch. That doesn't look weird at all. I just love the way that the this little symbol up here just sits perfectly within it all. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Like whoever designed this is a freaking genius. Everything just seems to fit into these little spaces. Like, Number one New York Times bestselling author just sits perfectly right in the center and then her name just fits right in the center of the bottom. It's just alignment. Alignment. Everything in this just aligns perfectly. That is just absolutely gorgeous. And then it does the same thing on the back as well except it doesn't have any of the animals. It's just so beautiful to look at and it's all blue and gold. I also love this cover, Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan. It, it's just so different and unique. It's just a man made out of stars with carnivalesque written in this beautiful scroll and then Neil Jordan at the bottom. It's blue. And this is more of a rose gold, I would say. Probably wrong. This is just absolutely gorgeous. This really intrigued me when I first saw it online in Waterstones. But it, it also was a cover by. I'm a sucker for stars. Real sucker for stars because like a lot of these books have stars on them. Um, Last book in all of the books that I love the covers for in 2017 is Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. Yep, it's all blue and it has this like, simple but beautiful font. This font works with this style. The sizing of this font works with this style. The fact that their names are in capitals and the title is in lowercase is beautiful. It works. This image on the back is absolutely stunning. It almost could petrify you, but it will entrance you into coming into it. I saw this, I don't know how many times at work, that I was like thinking, I've never read Stephen King, but I think this might be the first book that I've ever read by Stephen King. It is just gorgeous and there's a little peacock down here. There's like bugs all over the place. There looks like there's eyes staring at you. There's little fireflies down here by the look of it and there's butterflies or moths or something like that. The spine has another butterfly kind of firefly going on in the back of it. Oh my goodness, don't wake them. And you have a tiger coming out. You have all kinds of bugs. I'm getting itchy just looking at it. You know what sealed me? Is this little sticker down here saying featuring limited edition hidden cover illustration. Take a look under the dust jacket. Well, these PHNs are gorgeous as well. There's just these, a little illustration of butterflies, moths, whatever. But get ready. This fox in blue foil. Oh my god. Guys, this is absolutely gorgeous. I, c I couldn't get over how gorgeous this was. I think there's other animals that are on the front with different editions. I think there's like a lion in one of them as well, but oh my goodness. Just to have this little fox here, that sealed it for me that I was going to be buying this book. That and the fact that the story intrigued me, but just the fox on it, oh my goodness. That is what sealed it. Whew, that was a lot of books and I think I have them all. There you have it guys, those are all of my favourite book covers from the books that I bought in 2017. Not all of them were released in 2017, but I bought them in 2017, so that's why they're on this list. Let me know what your favourite book covers were in 2017, what do you think of these book covers that I featured. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video.